I am Dave Holmes from MTV and Esquire Magazine, and you are listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. You are now listening to the best show in the universe, The Anthony Rogers Show. You probably wish that this was your show, but it's not. It's The Anthony Rogers Show. Tell all of your friends to listen to this show. This show is possible because of sponsors like Siempre Tequila. Um, It's a good sipping tequila, good mixing for margaritas. Um, Link in the description, buy some right now. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Uh, Today we have a huge guest. Uh, You may know him by just name, but uh, we'll do a basic info too. Uh, Dave Holmes, a former VJ, actor, a bunch of things. How are you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Not too bad, man. Like it's it's good. weird talking to you as an adult because like you were. I, I feel like uh, without knowing a huge part of uh, everyone's childhood in my generation, just by being on MTV. Uh, okay, well, all right, <laughs> that's wild because you're not a child. You're an adult now. No, as a child though, I felt like like when I was in like uh, when I was in like school, like as a child, I mean, like it was. Uh, no, uh, that's what I mean. Like you, it's weird to hear that from people who are now fully adults. That makes me feel. <laughs> elderly but not in a bad way that's all, bad. I, I think it's awesome man you guys like uh i don't know, it's like pop culture man it's like cool like what was that what was it kind of like being like i'd say that was like mtv's prime as far as i look at it like what, what would you uh what would you say to like be, what was it like being a part of mtv in its prime i guess like if that's true um i mean you know i i had my my like mtv prime was when i was 13 in 1984 so you know <laughs> so it was started, like yeah. you know prince and and um Michael Jackson and Van Halen and all of these, you know, like these things that, that take me back and that are such an important part of my life. And like knowing that I was at the center of MTV in those years for someone else is like so exciting. And and even at the time it's, you know, when, when these teenagers would show up in Times Square and just like scream up at the studio, it was like, this is important. This is a thing that they'll remember. And so to like be involved with that is, is really exciting. You know? No, oh, that's crazy. It's like, you guys are like the Beatles at one point, you know, it's like a, well, uh, we weren't, but the, the, you know, the, the network and all you guys were part. Yeah. But you were part of that. You're part of the, like the, you're like one of the stars of that network, man. Like, I mean, I'd well, say- okay. Thanks. That's nice. But yeah, but it was, you know, I mean, it was about, it was about the, it was about the groups and the, and the artists and stuff, but uh, you know, it was, it was exciting to be there. It really was. It was totally surreal. Um, you know, it's funny. I, um, Damien Fahey is a good friend of mine. Uh, he was a VJ after me and, um, and it was over not long ago. We have a projector set up in the backyard. So, you know, for during lockdown, we were having, you know, responsible screenings out back. And, uh, and he and I were like, we never do this, but we went on YouTube to find like old clips of stuff that we had done. And there's some stuff on there. And it's like, well, good for that guy. You know, like I've no, neither of us had any recollection of what it was we were on screen doing. Like, it's like, oh, that's definitely me, but I don't, I don't remember. It was just all so surreal that like, I guess my brain couldn't form memories the normal way, you know? Yeah, that's crazy to think about. I guess you're just like, like working every day. It's just like part of your job. You're like, oh, this is a fragment of my job that day. Yeah, yeah. And, and you think, you know, it. it's always so wild that you think you're going to, I mean, always you think you're going to remember everything. But like, then you look at an old picture and you're like, okay, yeah, I guess that's me. <laughs> um, I should have kept, uh, should have kept a journal or something. Was everybody- but at least there's stuff on YouTube. I feel like in your situation, everybody you'd work with is just like a musical genius in some way. Like they just know everything about like, uh, like, like just like everybody I've talked to that has ever worked at MTV just knows so much about music and just in general, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just like a really cool, it's like an encyclopedia of like now, I think Matt Pinfield famously, I mean, I think, but oh. I think all of you guys are kind of like that. It's where like you all have like a, just a catalog of just like music knowledge of it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. A lot of us, you know, were there because we were really passionate about music. And so we, you know, we knew a lot about the stuff that we, that we loved, but then also some people were just cool, you know, like some, some of the people I was never, but like there were some people who got that job just because they were like cool and smooth and stuff. And that's, that's a skill too. That's crazy. 
you like um it's just weird what do you what do you think about the current uh day mtv like what do you like what are your thoughts on that well it's not for me you know um but it's not supposed to be for me so um you know i i will say i think it's um kind of a drag that there isn't one place where music lives on tv anymore you know it comes up when when like the people from my uh from my era of mtv when i was 13 like when a prince dies or when george michael dies um you want there to be one place where it's like you know they're going to be showing the videos and the old performances and you know they'll bring people on to talk about them or whatever and that and now it's like when those things happened you turned it on and it was you know skateboard wipeout videos and you know mean girls or whatever like there that place doesn't exist and uh that's and so that, that that's kind of a bummer but it would be a hard thing to pull off right now because things are so fragmented um there is no one culture that all the kids pay attention to anymore there are millions that's a great point that you and then smart that, and very perceptive you pick that up on that it's like i think everybody's just kind of in their own media bubble rather than like being in oh, like totally one to three media bubbles like uh i mean we went from like the 50s with like ed sullivan being the only thing on tv to now there's like a bunch of mm-hmm. options cable channels youtube oh, yeah. like spotify all these different things like kind of separating yeah. and, and, and in fact i think the young people have like moved past tv like the idea of yeah. you know they're like you have to go to this set in your house at a certain time if you want to watch something that's that's like cave paintings. You know? <laughs> that's hilarious. It's yeah, crazy. No, it is outdated. It seems like, man. Like, uh, yeah, it's definitely true. Look, like, what? So, what have you been working on? Like, what do you do now? Like, what is uh, what is some stuff you do now and stuff like? Well, I uh, I am an editor at large for Esquire magazine. I've been there for the last six years. Yeah, thanks. I'm 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 so lucky and grateful. It's it's such a fun place to be. Um, I I kind of. You know, I, I was I still work in TV here and there, but writing became more of my focus. And and I, um, I had a column for a while at Vulture, which is New York Magazine's sort of pop culture site. Big and my editor yeah. moved to Esquire. Yeah, it's a, it was a, that was a fun place to work. Um, but my editor moved to Esquire and took me along with him, and and I've been there ever since. And it's it's been really nice. I, I wrote a book five years ago this summer, actually five years ago this month, um, called Party of One. It's like a, a memoir about uh some of my wilder stories and whatnot um and uh and and like i say i still do you know the occasional tv thing everything kind of ground to a halt a year and a half ago obviously um but you know even still i like will pop up here and there i got to uh i uh, i've had a recurring part on reno 911 i uh, saw that comedy central and and then on quibi and now i don't know where it is but it's airing somewhere um so dur- during lockdown, I got to uh, uh, to go, like they did a whole season in a couple of weeks with everyone locked into a hotel um, and you had to test on the way in. And then it was just like theater camp for a couple of weeks, just playing around and, you know, doing episodes and playing all kinds of different characters and whatnot. I kind of, I do a bajillion things. Um, I'm That's kind awesome. of constantly juggling a whole lot. It is, you know, it is nice. I'm never bored. No, it's cool. Yeah, I was. That's that's really cool. I like. Uh, I like that you're like Thanks. busy and stay, staying on. Like the you're still. But those are still like pop culture things. It's funny. Like you're. You just seem like you're just kind of infused in the in pop culture. You know, it's like kind of a. It's a cool vibe. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I was noticing your IMDb was pretty good. I mean, I saw the Reno 911 and I saw some other stuff. You're on. It's pretty cool. Like uh, just kind of like, like uh, it's a cool experience, man. Like uh, this whole like Thanks. this whole thing. Like like reading that and stuff. Like. Let me tell you. I mean, I'm I'm still pinching myself that I get to do what I get to do. Like when I, when I got the MTV job, I thought, you know, this, I was thrilled obviously, but I was like this, nope, you know, you get maybe five years if you're lucky. And, and then after that, you know, you kind of have to figure out what it is that you want to do because it's not like, Oh, I'll just go be a VJ for another channel. Like that's kind of it, you know? (laughs) Um, So I, I was, I, I, um, all I wanted to do was use whatever kind of platform or, or like name recognition the job gave me and do things that interest me. And I'm, you know, and then when I run out of, you know, road there, then I'll, I'll go be normal again or, or whatever. But like, I haven't, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still getting to do what I, what I love to do. So I'm incredibly grateful. 
it seems like the guys that know that it's only for a short time end up like figuring out ways to make it long term. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. what I always kind of see that. I see that with like a, like a lot of people. Like, this is only for five minutes. I better like do a bunch of sh-. And then they end up like lasting so long. So they're, they're seeing it five minutes at a time rather than thinking it will always be there, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But I see yeah. that a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it would be nice to think that you would have job security for the rest of your life, but you'd probably get a little complacent, you know? Right. Entertainment's um, hard. It's hard to last entertainment that long. It's like culture changes so much. I mean, there's so many different versions yeah. of culture. I mean, so I mean, yeah. what's, cool, what's cool 10 years ago, I mean, in, versus now, I mean, and we'll see the same thing in 10 years from now, you know, it's like just weird, just the way it works. And Oh yeah. Yeah. Things change like crazy. I, I do a live comedy show with some friends. Um, and you know, we've been, we've been doing it online in the last year and a half as you know, theaters have been closed, but, um, we looked back at some of the scripts from like three years ago and it's like, Oh, we would never do this now. This is like, you know, things do change really quickly and you do have to, you have to evolve. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. You, you were telling me yeah. too, you're from, you're from St. Louis originally. I am. Yeah. I'm That's actually crazy. going there uh, next week. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's a small world, My man. family for the first time in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. I imagine with all the stuff, probably travel's been... Yeah. <laughs> it's probably been hard to get out of New York City, like... <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm in uh, Los Angeles, but... Oh, I, I but assume I you are. Okay. No, yeah. And no, I haven't been out of... Lo- well, we've done a couple little, like, day trips, but I haven't been on an airplane in, you know, a year and a half. It's crazy. Oh, no, I bet. Yeah, it's been a weird... Definitely a weird time. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this to happen. But, uh, no. <laughs> No, you couldn't. You couldn't. No, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I guess LA is kind of the same way. Like, just like the large population, so probably hard to get out of that. Like, that whole thing with all this crazy shit going on, man. That's great. But yeah, no. So, you uh, what part of St. Louis are you from again originally? I grew up in Kirkwood. Okay, I guess small. Pear. Yeah, uh, West County. Um, yeah, uh, it was there from when I was five until I left for college, and I, you know, haven't really lived there since. Oh yeah, well, um, that's, that's a small world. Like, I, I didn't, I didn't, crazy. I didn't know that. So I was like, you told me that, and then I looked it up and said, it's like if I just would have googled your name before I text you, it literally says from St. Yeah. Louis on on, on Google. Oh, yeah. the, the main page literally says like that. And after you told me that, it, like I was like, I see it every. I saw it more than one place after that. But it was, oh, okay, know, okay. I didn't know that until well. you told me that. It was crazy. Like uh, that's yeah. I never expect that. And like uh, and Jesse Campney was a surprising amount about uh, about uh, about St. Louis too. It just threw me. Did really. Yeah, it threw me off that you got like you're from here and then he would know about it. So I'm just like it was just you don't expect people knowing about Missouri typically. That's kind of what I like about Missouri, is that no one knows about it. And then it kind of threw me off that like you're like, you're like, no, I'm actually from there. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's wild. I uh Jesse Jesse knows things you wouldn't expect. No, he's like you're all like that in a weird way. You're all like in like like pop culture encyclopedias. Like that's what I see in like any kind of way, like any, like through your interviews or anything you're doing, like and then like him just like he, he's like a savant with it, like, like he's just yeah. throwing you all, he's like throwing oh, you yeah. all this stuff. I think you almost have to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys originally won that uh that competition, right? Like that was how you guys. Well, got he there. did. Oh, okay, he did. What he did, did. You, How did you get? Okay, I thought you won that too. Uh, how did no. you get there then? Um. Well, I was. Uh, I came in second, I guess. Oh. Okay. And um. And I just was like. Well, um, I, I got a push, you know, I, um, I was 27, I guess. And, uh, and Jesse was like 18, which yeah, he was, was like wild. a child. Yeah. He was a kid. Yeah. Um, but I was not, you know, I had had a regular job in advertising in New York for a while and I didn't like it and I didn't, I wasn't good at it. Mm-hmm. And I, I really wanted to work somewhere like MTV, but I had no idea how to make it happen. And so I stood in line and I auditioned and, and things worked out and then I didn't win, but I was like, well, I got this far. And, and when I saw Jesse, I was like, I th- this guy's probably going to win. So the, the objective like, is, win? yeah, I mean, he was like such an engaging character, you know, I think, yeah, he would, I, I, you know, I think you guys compliment yeah, each other. Well, almost, though. You guys like really compliment uh-huh. each other. Well, You're, yeah, you seem like a, like an intelligent kind of together kind of guy. He seems like a wild card, but intelligent too. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, we were definitely uh, contrasting styles for sure. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so he, he did get the job and then I just was like, okay, put a smile on your face, go to the rap party, get as many business cards as you can keep calling and emailing until they tell you to leave them alone or they give you a job. Just, I just found some sort of like reserve of like confidence or fake confidence or whatever, and just pushed. 
and uh, and uh, eventually they they gave me uh, they gave me a job. Like it was right before summertime, which is when they launch a lot of new shows, and they they had one uh, in the hopper that nobody was quite right for, and they tried me out for it, and and it uh, it got picked up, and that was that. So that's awesome. So that was no okay. I thought like because you came in second, you had a show too or something. That's uh no, that's that's no. cool. So you still were like you still went to the casting and stuff. You tried to like so you just went as like a normal like dude, but with knowing like you probably had the connections and stuff in the competition, but still like well uh, yeah. I mean I did you know I was able to like get in the building and tr- and take some meetings and stuff like that. And just because I was around, cool. they were like oh come you know uh we're gonna do a pilot for this show come host it i was like no okay um and yeah and that was that was that but i mean it was definitely there was you know people were had like goodwill for me because i didn't get that job but i think you know they would have forgotten in a week if i had let them so i was like i'm just not going to let you forget me uh so you know like you're either gonna have to call like get a restraining order or give me a job but I think you, I think you pointed out a lot of things that like uh, that, that they aren't really public in entertainment. Like I think a lot, like uh, a lot of inter- people that aren't in entertainment don't know how many emails and phone calls it takes to get what you want. I, th- I think those oh, are yeah. that, that, that's a huge that's a huge thing that I think people like maybe aspiring to do something similar to what you do or just aspiring to be in entertainment should hear is that uh, I mean like what you just said about that is like you you have to just send emails and after emails after I mean. And that, that's how I got you for this show. Even yeah, I, mean, I just reached out and asked if you want to do, I mean, it's the same yeah. thing. It's, it's the same thing in, in, in most aspects of entertainment. If you're in a band or if you're booking bands mm-hmm. or if you're a comedian or whatever you're doing, like, like, like that's, that's the most important aspect other than being talented. Is, is, oh, you gotta be bold. You yeah, gotta you be do. Bold. Yeah, you, yeah you really do. Like people aren't going to come looking for you. You know, like that's you really, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in front of them. Um, yeah, you've got to, got to, got to be bold. And, um, uh, a, a teacher, like an improv teacher that I had long ago, like before the MTV thing, um, said something that really stuck with me, which is um, you're studying here to be an actor. So when you go out into the world to sell yourself, act like a confident person, like act like somebody who absolutely knows that they have what it takes and that they deserve a job. And, you know, eventually that confidence will rub off on you the like the fake confidence will become real fake it until you make it but act confident so that's what i did that's funny that's funny i think it's a lot of good advice that people maybe like uh like in the next generation like, the, like maybe like a 16 year old listening to this or something you know like kind of want yeah. to do what you, what, what you already did like or whatever you know like or, or currently doing i think that just, that's the best you can get out of that honestly it's like they don't you don't have like people don't say that all the time but they're, they're, they don't ever talk about that aspect of it i don't think i think they're like work really hard i don't know i play guitar for like 12 hours i mean you can be the best mm-hmm. guitar player in the world but you're in your garage if you're not doing what you say like, like that, that, right. that whole like reach out a million times type thing like book your own show you know it's like, I don't know, it's like yeah you do a lot of shit like that. You gotta be super active. I think Steve-O kind of touched on a little bit in his biography, which is weird. Uh, his autobiography, he touched on that same thing too. He just had to email lists all the time. He was just constantly yeah. emailing to everybody. And like, I mean, that's what it, that's a lot of the, that's a lot of it, man. I mean, it's not yeah. all of it. That's a lot of it though. I mean. Oh, it's a huge amount of it. It's a huge amount of it. And it, and if you like, if you don't, if you doubt yourself a little bit, if you, if you're like, oh, I'm not as good as, you know, whatever person who's already in the in the job that you want, you have to remember that that person, you're seeing the final draft of that person. That's you know, great, you're seeing you're seeing the best take that they did on camera, or you're seeing you know the the best run through of that song that they did in the studio with the best production and the you know whatever. Um, your own, your your, you tend to want to put your first draft up against someone else's final, you know, copy. And you can't, I mean, you just like, you gotta know, you gotta at least pretend to know that you deserve a place if you're trying to take a place. Yeah, that's a good point. But like, yeah, I see, I see a lot of like young bands, like they, they take that a little too far and like that, you have like this like fake ego, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, is that yeah. like assholes with, with like nothing? You had, you had to find yeah. a, sweet, a sweet medium between like faking it too much. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and, yeah, like, no. Yeah, bluster is a whole different thing. Like, you know, ego <laughs> yeah. or whatever, that's a whole different thing. And that, to me, it always reads like insecurity. That always says to me like, oh, you don't actually believe that you have what it takes. But if you, if you have the quiet confidence just to be like, hey, let me, let me come in and prove myself, yeah, yeah. Um, then that'll, that'll get you far. And if you don't have it, I swear to God, pretend to have it and, and you'll trick yourself soon enough. 
No, that's a good point because, like, I mean, you're not going to believe in yourself who's going to really, you know. <laughs> like, I exactly, mean, exactly. That's the main thing. Like, yeah, that, I think you touched on a lot of cool things that actually probably could help people. I mean, realist. I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily yeah, going into that like that, but I think that that should be if people are listening. I think they should definitely listen to that. Like, I mean, no matter what field of entertainment they're going after, I mean, even if like. You know, it could be any aspect, like from concert promoter to like whatever, whatever it is, you know, just like, I think that's the, that's the key. I think, man, like outside of entertainment, it's the key. Yeah. It could be. Gotta, I don't know. What, yeah. I don't know what's about outside of, okay. Yeah. I don't either. <laughs> that's right. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even remember what a job's like. I, I mm. like to be honest with you, man. Like, yeah. What did you do before? All, like you said, you were just in advertising. Did you, did you do any things you hated before that? Like, do you, like besides advertising? Oh, God. Like, yeah, I, have you like I, Burger King or any, any kind of like funny job? Every, like that? Every job I had before MTV, I hated, I think. Um, <laughs> I My first job actually was at a McDonald's in De Pere on Manchester. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was 16 years old, we 1987. That's where we all start. We all start at McDonald's, don't we? <laughs> we do. Um, yeah, we do. That, was, that was not great. Um, <laughs> advertising wasn't terrible. It just wasn't, you know, what I – it just – didn't feel like what I was here to do. You might enjoy um, it more I've, now than back then. I think like it was more maybe. like that. it was more now. It's like more remote and more fun. I think than it would have been back in like the nineties and stuff. Like maybe it seemed, it seemed too like too BS back then. Like just well, for, you know, for, for creative people, it, for creative. People. Yeah, and my job was not a creative one. I was always trying to break into the creative side, but I was more like a spreadsheets kind of a guy. It was not all that interesting. But in the nineties. All of the all of the magazines and all the uh, networks and whatever everybody had a ton of money. So oh, yeah. my like I had an entry level job. I was in New York City. I could not afford to you know pay my rent barely. But I like every night I was at a different party eating hors d'oeuvres for dinner. It was like it was glamorous. Um, it just wasn't it just wasn't the job for me. Um, I did a lot of temp jobs that I absolutely hated. Um, I like would when i was like 25 i needed extra money so i would work like overnight shifts at uh at like credit suisse or like one of these like investment banks so i'd be putting like presentations together for young investment bankers who were starting to be younger than me so i'd get like chewed out by like a 23 year old when i was 25 <laughs> and the temp agency that i got the job through was called mademoiselle so i had to check in dave holmes mademoiselle <laughs> um it was just, it was like emasculating in every conceivable way and i hated that um so yeah so when i got the mtv job i was extremely uh, grateful. Well, I think like something like that, like probably pushed you towards like seeking something like MTV. Cause like, uh, yeah. like, had you, had you been content, you just would have been there for like 40 years, you know? Like, so it's good. Like, yeah, it's good to see like, uh, they kind of push people in the right direction. Like we always, I like, sure. it's like putting it, trying to put the round peg in the square and the square spot or whatever the hell that saying is, you know, it's like, just, a, yeah, it's just the universe pushing you forward, man. I think like, uh, and that's crazy. Yeah. Like you continued like kind of, uh, to kind of keep it going. Cause I think a lot of people like have it for like 15 seconds type thing, but I think you, you've kind of continued with it. And I think a lot of those guys have somehow in like their own way and they all seem like they're just doing what they want to do still with the, like, which is like, I think the goal. <laughs> like, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like you, um, you forget, that when you get into this business, when you, if, if you get into entertainment, you get into it at first because you're a fan and you just want to be near it, right? Like you just want to be a part of it somehow. And like any old thing will do, you know, let me, let me you know, run cable or something, you know, uh, I, I just want to be near it. And then, you know, when you get some success, if you get some success, you start to get a little greedy about it and you want to always be like, you always want to have a cool job within it. But it's like, you know, it, remember when you started, you started as as a fan, you know? And, and if you get to keep like working in the business and not having to do anything that is horrifying to pay your rent, then you're winning. You know, it doesn't have to be a super cool, high profile job as long as you're just in it and near it like you wanted to be at the beginning, then you, you won. I feel, I feel a total, I can totally relate to that as a podcaster. Cause like I, I get to talk to guys like you and I was, I, I grew up watching you on TV, you know, it's like a weird, yeah. it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And then I've had a, had a lot, I've been blessed enough to talk to a lot of people that like, I've, I've had a lot of good yeses that just like people, I, I have some like just nostalgic kind of thing too. I'm like, I, I like you, like you, like you probably introduced me to a lot of bands even like we're talking, I was talking okay. about my, I was talking with my buddy earlier, but uh, I told him you're going to be on the show and I was just casually talking to him and he's talking about like just people from MTV back in the day that showed him his favorite bands and stuff. I think he, he wanted, I That's, think that makes me very happy. Yeah. It's just a crazy Not aspect nothing. to think about, right? That's like crazy yeah. to think about. 
Like we've never even yeah. met before today. Yeah, I mean, like we've still in different places, but 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 yet so much influence from like guys like uh, through the media and like uh, I think you you tell me either you were uh, you were someone introducing to Radiohead even I think or something like on MTV oh. at one point. It was either that you or Finfield. I was talking. I was talking about. I forgot who I was saying it. Like I was talking about a bunch of got MTV VJs with him, and I think like I want to say he said like some show you did like played like Radiohead or something. Like that. that was the first time you heard it or, or so. I want to say that's, that's what he said. That's very possible. That's very possible. And, and I, that that truly makes me so happy. Like when I if I like make a mixtape for somebody or a playlist now for somebody, and and it's like, and then they become like a super fan of somebody that I introduced them to like that just makes me so happy. Or, or like when I, you know, mention an artist who I just saw live and I loved. And then the next time they're in town, I see like 20 people I recognized because I wouldn't shut up about this artist. It's like, yes, that, that makes me, that makes me happy. That's great. I mean, that's what the job was. It seemed like just like just showing, know, yeah. people, show, showing people like the the new songs and stuff at the time. We're, yeah, it was such a great time in music. I I love that time. So you said I was yours was like you, you've been in the same situation when when MTV first came out. I guess like like the mm -hmm. like the eighties. You felt the same thing. Oh, that's yeah. kind of that's crazy how multi generational was. And I think the was it the record labels kind of ruined MTV with like with, with what they're doing now. It's like uh, like the record labels got on about playing music or something like that. And then like uh, no, well, what happened exactly? I guess it stopped selling and it stopped being a commercial form well, or something. A couple, I don't, I'm, a couple I'm trying things. to figure it out. A few, yeah, a few things happen kind of all at once. Um, one is that um, the internet happened, right? So, oh, so everybody, yeah. So, like everybody, you know, the idea of like even kids. I don't, I don't think really listen to the radio anymore. Like, I, I don't think kids have time for listening to anything they don't already know they like. You know. Um, or like something in it that the algorithm on Spotify gives them or, or whatever. Or if they want to watch music videos, they'll go on YouTube where they can say, okay, I want to watch this one right now, which you can't do with TV. So that, yeah, that yeah. happened. We just have um, to wait. We had to wait, wait for that top 10 list and stuff. Like I had to wait for that top 10 list. <laughs> um, also, e even in my day, um, the way that Nielsen ratings worked, and that's how that, – that's how – like networks knew how many people were watching and then knew how, like what to charge for advertising uh, time. Um, Nielsen, Nielsen ratings dictated that you had to be, a viewer had to be tuned in for 15 consecutive minutes to be considered a viewer. So when it was just music videos, if like, if you're watching and you're like, oh, I've seen this one 10,000 times, I'm tired of it. You would change the channel to something else. And then, you wouldn't be counted as a viewer. So our, our oh. blocks, our blocks of music videos, like the ratings would dip. So that's why they started to put on more shows that had like a beginning, a middle and an end so that you would stay tuned all throughout. And, and sometimes those involve music and sometimes they didn't. Um, and then um, Napster came along and file sharing came along and, and um, where you once had to go and buy an $18 CD to hear a song you liked, now you could just rip it and have it for free. So like record company budgets went into the toilet because like is that suddenly nobody was buying records anymore. So people weren't really making music videos the way that they had been. Um, it, it was just, it was like, it was kind of a, it was the intersection of a whole lot of different things. That, oh, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. And I wanted Change to ask you because I figured like, I figured you'd be able to like you art, like you were able to uh, properly articulate it, so, like, but like you were in that whole thing too, almost like I think it affected like people in music way more than it affected like anyone else. I think, and I, it, I, yeah, and it's yeah. just it's crazy how it all turned out. Like I, I think personally, I think on MTV is unwatchable, but I think you brought up a good point about how it's not made for me at all. Yeah. Like you, you said it's not made for you, but it's not it's not made for me either. That makes a lot more sense. I mean, like, yeah. but, but I just miss. I I wish I could just like tell people like what that was like. I mean, they have it on YouTube, I guess, to see it. But it's, it's just mm -hmm. weird to see like that was just a magic moment in time. Like MTV, just like like when they had music videos, it's just magic, dude. Like that was like, it was such magic, dude. Like it really was. And I I remember when it when it came out. In fact, I remember before it came out. I, I would have been ten years old because it's about to turn forty. Wow. Like I think next weekend, it turns forty. That's crazy. Um, and I remember like the, the chatter among the 10 year olds uh, in my neighborhood was that 
uh, this thing called MTV was about to happen and it was going to be uh, a cable channel of just music videos. And I was like, that is all I've ever wanted in my life. I, if, you know, I, if we had it, I would watch it all day. We didn't have cable at the time. Um, but just like if a friend had cable and you were 12, 13 years old, that's just what you would do. That would be your night. You would just sit in front of MTV and watch what they gave you. And it didn't matter whether you loved every single song. It was just all like from another better planet. It, it was really such a part of, of my generation's experience. And, and I don't think this current generation has that. I don't think they're having a worse time. They have things that we didn't have. For sure. But, but. They, they, don't, they don't have, they don't know what that is like yeah, just to be you. like you know to turn it on just be like what is this banana rama mm-hmm. like it's crazy are you tired of lacking confidence are you tired of breaking the bank just to look good Vire fiduce is gearing up with confidence with the selection of affordable premium t-shirts hoodies long sleeves Vire fiduce is here to help you click the link in the bio to browse their new october drop It was crazy. No, no, it was the same exact experience as a kid too. Like we and like you, what you said about the ratings makes a lot of sense too, because that was the ritual for like those shows. Like we'd be watching a music video, and if a boy band or like someone else came, we're like ah, we, <laughs> you change, yeah. you change it for a second, then you, then you yeah. turn it back. Like as a kid, I, I love like corn and lip biscuit. I turn it back for like corner like lip biscuit or something. Like oh, oh I yeah. hope they, I hope they're number one today or whatever. You know, it's like yeah, it's, yeah, it totally. Was, it was really just a cool time, and I, I almost feel embarrassed admitting I liked Corn and Limp Biscuit at this point in my life. But but I, I was okay. there. I, I was there. You know, I love that stuff. Yeah, you were like, powerless to it. You had to love it. Um, <laughs> I think I waited in line know, for one of those albums, one of those Limp Biscuit albums. Actually, like I, I love yeah. I loved music that much at that time. I just loved me. I wild. loved music, man. Like wild. You know, it's funny. Limp Biscuit is very much in the conversation today, as a matter of fact, because um, I just uh, wrote a, a thing about the. Um, a documentary that premieres tomorrow, July 23rd on HBO about Woodstock 99. Oh, um, okay. Which I'm, I'm in, I'm one of the talking heads in it. And also That's I was awesome. there because I was, I yeah. was at MTV at the time and I was oh, wow. one, of the, one of the people who was covering it. And it was such a <laughs> fucking nightmare, such a nightmare. Yeah, what was and, it like being there? I've, I've heard it. Oh, I know I'm familiar with this story, but I wasn't there. Like what was, oh, was, it, was it like a police God. shit show or what? Like, Oh my God. I mean, listen, we had, um, I was both lucky and unlucky in that, you know, when I, I, I was, I wouldn't just mill about in the crowd on my own. Like we had, you know, I, if I was going out into the crowd, I'd have like my camera crew with me and, and whatever. And, and we had, you know, backstage, we had a nice little air conditioned area and whatever. So it was like, we were not really in the shit the way that the fans were. Cause it was so, so fucking hot. And, uh, and it was all on concrete. It was like an Air Force base. So it was just radiating summer heat off the concrete. And uh, so I didn't really have to deal with that. What I did have to deal with, though, was angry young white guys who were mad at NSYNC and, like, took it out on us. <laughs> like, they were mad. We were playing so much pop music. So what I remember most vividly was... Um, I went out, like my thing was, uh, they would always just send me out with a camera crew to like talk to people and try to make something happen and whatever, which was really fun to do, but um, except, except this time. Um, <laughs> because they sent me out into the campgrounds to like wake people up or whatever. And everyone was already up because probably they had never gone to sleep. And Kellogg's was, had, had handed out like sample boxes of cereals, which like nobody had any milk because why would you bring milk? Um, <laughs> You're not going to like, you know, a bottle of water costs like eight bucks for a small bottle. So it's like, you're not going to wash it down with water. So these little tiny cereal boxes became like weapons and we just would get pelted by little tiny boxes of special K, which have very sharp corners, Anthony. (laughs) Um, So I would just get absolutely pelted. Carson got it much worse than I did because he was, he was much more of the face of the network. Um, But they, they were pissed at us. Um, and then they, uh, you know, burn the entire place down. That's it's a very good documentary. <laughs> highly recommended. Dude, I'm definitely going to check that out. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Wild. No, I remember like hating pop music too, but not, maybe not as much as them. But, uh, yeah. But How do you feel about it now? Do you, do you, when you hear it now? 
have you I'm, made peace with it? I'm older now, and I basically just like think everybody's doing their thing. You know, I, I, I just think like, however you get there, it's fine. At least you're listening to music. I got you know, it's like right. even if even if you're listening to, like in sync or something, at least you're listening to music. I'm, I listen yeah. like I'm I'm old now. I listen to, like country gospel and stuff, man. I, I, oh, really? I, I, that's why I've been tearing through. I've been tearing through that dialogue of old just country gospel songs, man. They're like the classic yeah. American songs type thing. Like, but I mean, I, I I'm just like I'm I'm not as I don't know. I I think I probably think what I thought about boy bands about Limp Bizkit and Corn now. <laughs> Yeah. I, I think I switched full spectrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm like, how did I listen to that? You know, it's like, yeah. I mean, time and place, it all had a like, good time in my like youth and like good time. And like, uh, it all had its place, you know? And like, I, mean, I would knock I anybody trying to, trying to do it, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny. Limp Biscuit is playing Lollapalooza this year. That's, that's crazy. Which is about. wild. And it's like, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, it's 20 something, 21 ish years since they're, you know, since their big moment, which is around the time that the nostalgia cycle starts to revisit things. So I wonder whether like Limp Biscuit and Corn will hold up to, you know, uh, a listen 20 years down the line. We're all going to get those red hats back out. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to oh, get those I red think, Yankee I, sats back out, I think. Like, <laughs> good Lord. I think the red hat may, might be permanently tainted, but... Um, <laughs> But How many times like, did you see that girl, like working for MTV? Like, everybody around you just started having red hats. Like after, um, after there, were, yeah, there was a C. There was a C <laughs> of them in Times Square for sure. For That's, sure. No, I bet, man. I, well, I was one of those kids. I had, I had those, uh, not in Times Square, but I, I had that red hat too. I think at one point. Yeah, they, yeah. they got me, bro. They got, they got me. <laughs> was uh, was suburban St. Louis all? all swept up in limp biscuit at the time i think that yeah i think like the whole family values 98 thing was just great to me like as a kid like mm-hmm. that whole like uh i, I booked orgy you as i got older I, I booked them at a venue one time like uh and that, really? that was that was kind of cool meeting like jay gordon and all that thing that was kind of interesting. yeah that was like cool. uh, that, was, that was years ago. that was in my 20s when i, when I booked cl- uh bars and stuff but that was yeah. just but that was just weird, like uh, like getting to like just I don't know, like this is like this is even happening. It's crazy to me, man. Like uh, like Dave Holmes on a podcast. It's like crazy to me. I mean, it's, like, yeah. I, like, if I could have told the child version of myself that I was gonna meet these guys eventually and have them on one of my shows, like I would high five my arm off. You know, it's just it's just crazy. Oh, I love it. It's just crazy. I love like, it. Uh, everything and, full circle and entertainment, kind of like. And from a tropical island. Yeah, <laughs> you're really living. That's a it's a it's a real beach. Uh, the glitches are fake. All the, uh-huh. all, okay. all the glitches. No, like, it's funny, man. Like, I just how, how what the power of just like what this does, man. It's crazy. And like, you probably, yeah, you touched on a lot of things. I think that like people want to know that, uh, want to get into entertainment. I think like people listening are just like a lot of people I know just were excited about, like, uh, like seeing the series. I was just telling them about it. They're like, what they like, what I, Dave Holmes, what's he, do? you know, it's like this what I hear that immediately. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, good, drive, dude. So you, you've kind of held good. up, too, I think, just people know who you good, are and thanks. stuff. It sounds like just like, like, I mean, just in the, in the, if my friends were a test market, like, like my friends all knew who you were, just sort of like being, oh, like, we're like, we're all kids and they're like, they're like what like like what good. Today? Like everybody, good, everybody, right? everybody knew it's kind of a good vibe like uh i don't know it's very lucky thank you it's very lucky and, and thank uh, you for saying that that's cool but yeah i mean listen we we have uh, we have an internet now so use it slide into people's yeah. dms say hello Definitely. that's the worst I mean, that's that can like, happen well, that's the next generation yeah it's just, it does and someone will eventually do that for me you know when i'm like as i get older and stuff too like well, i'll be like however old you know like uh i'll be like yeah. 60 70 whatever people are like oh man that was you said something funny 20 years ago yeah <laughs> like, it's, yeah it's like the same that's cool that you what's your kind of like uh well this kind of a stereotypical question but i like asking guys like you it's like what was the craziest experience you had in this whole me- this whole mess like uh i mean it could be something that happened last week but or it could be something that happened like uh like when you were with mtv like what was some crazy Ooh. stuff you just remember thinking to yourself like this is nuts like other than the woodstock <laughs> thing we touched that a little bit <clears throat> yeah um oh god you know, it's 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 really hard to beat the first, like my first day on the job officially. I bet because um, you know because I'd been through the want to be a VJ thing and and a couple you know maybe a month or so had passed and then and then I started working. It was um, it was right when the summer house was about to start like the everyone was going to seaside heights for the mtv beach house or whatever and um and i was i was kind of working on this show that would premiere later that summer and and i was it was starting to feel like i'm act like they're really gonna hire me and i'm gonna i'm gonna have a show here for a little while and i I was working on that pilot and there was a in the pre TRL days. There was a show called MTV Live. It was ninety oh, minutes long. That. It was just it was live, and I'd play videos, and there'd be interviews and whatever. There was no studio audience, but it was it was in that big studio that looked out over Times Square, and 
Um, and one of the higher ups, like one of the higher ups, and by the way, the higher ups are like 29 years old, you know, um, but like one of the big executives, I guess Carson and Ananda, who both hosted that show, both had to be at the beach house because it was right before Memorial Day weekend. And so the show didn't have a host for that day. And it started at like, let's say three, and this is maybe noon. Um, and this guy, Tony DeSanto called uh, called my producer. I don't think I had a cell phone yet. Called my producer. Um, my producer put me on the phone. And Tony was just like, uh, we need a host for the live show today. Can you do it? And I was like, uh-huh. Like, I, I was like, I had never hosted a television show in my life. I had certainly never hosted a live television show in my life. It was 90 minutes long. There was no co-host. There was no safety net. And it was just like, oh, and it's starting now. And this is another one where I was like, my my body was like, no, say no, you can't do that. That's stupid. That's crazy. You'll like, you'll cry on live TV. Um, but like, but my mouth, like something within me said, yes, do it. And, and so I acted like somebody who could do it. And then I went and I did it and it was exciting and it passed in the blink of an eye. And, you know, and I got to banter with Kurt Loader and I got to, you know, interview the the girl from Clueless or something, I don't know. And like, it just was the most exciting thing. And it, and, it, and it was like, I am doing, like, finally, I have found a thing that I, that I love to do and that I think I know how to do and that I, that I can like build on, you know, it, it was, it's not like, that's not like a dishy Hollywood story, but, it, but for me, it was just like, I, I, I will never forget the, like exhilaration of that moment and, and feeling like, okay, a, a, ch a new chapter is beginning here and I, I, I'm excited about it. No, it seems super um, honest. It seems like a super yeah. honest interpretation. Your nerves were well, already... I, today, like, uh, I, like, I, like do, does it still happen today or do you, are you just kind of like used to it by now? Or, like, or do you still get that whole like, uh, like if you're going to do something crazy for your job, like at, say at Esquire or something, like that, did you have, if you have a crazy uh -huh. story or interview, do you still get that feeling or is it just like... Uh, or, or is it just like, was that just like all back in the day? Like to where you, like when, it first, when you first start building it up, do you, do you get numb no. to it eventually or is it? No, I mean, you can, but, it, but it's important to like shake yourself out of it every so often and, and remember how lucky you are to be doing something that you love if you're lucky enough to be doing something you love. So, for sure. Um, wow. Yeah, so I'm like, you know, it's for Esquire, it's more about like getting stuff up on the website. And so I'm like, I constantly have like, a couple of things that I'm that I'm working on. I'm I'm um, I'm right now doing a, a ten episode investigative podcast that's coming out later this autumn, and and so I'm like writing scripts for that. That I, and I'm kind of learning how to do that as I do it, and and I'm I'm doing a whole bunch of different things um, that are that are interesting to me and that are challenging, and that's like it's it's a lot of busy work and it can be you know it's a lot of long hours and it can be tedious and all that, but it is super important at the end of each day or at the beginning of each day to like take a moment to be, to be grateful and to remember how much, like remember there was a time in your life when you would have killed to have as much busy work as you do now. Um, like when somebody, you know, my book's been out for five years when somebody like picks it up because it was, you know, in a, in the free library down the street or, or they uh, borrowed it from a friend or something. And like when, when, a uh, when someone who didn't watch MTV and doesn't know who I am, um, but just picked it up because it was recommended or something. And when they connect with a, a thing that I've written or an emotion that I expressed or whatever, that's like, oh my, that's like the most exciting thing that can possibly happen. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I really, um, I, I, my job is varied and, and weird enough that I don't have a whole lot of opportunities to forget how lucky I am. No, I think you touched on a lot of things. Like I could personally relate to and I think a good, just good and humble things. Like it's, it's like the show. Like every, every time I have somebody crazy on here, I'm just like, I'm like, seriously, like, like I had like Tommy no. Chong on one time and like, and like, uh, but I'm like, just, does Tommy Chong want to do this? Like I show they're like, yeah, he'll do this show. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, seriously. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, like it's, it's same with you. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing with like probably the last five guests I've had. And like, so yeah. I still get excited. I had that same excitement you're talking about. I, I think that's like, uh, that's, that's interesting that you, I was wondering if that went away or not. Cause like, it seems like, yeah. it seems like it's pretty much always awesome. Like no matter, like I had a guy, I had the singer from playing white tees on. And I'm like, I'm like, he wants oh, yeah. to do the show. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? It's, it's just like, yeah. it just keeps getting cool. You know, it's like, I, I like the aspect of it. And I feel like as long as I'm excited, it'll keep growing. You know, it's like that whole, yeah. that whole thing. Like, and, just, 
And most entertainment's yeah. kind of relatable, I've noticed. Like, I've talked to musicians that seem like, I'm like, I do comedy, so it's like, it's relatable to them. And like, you've done a lot of, it's like, we're all like, we all sound like the same kind of guy, like different versions of the same kind of guy, almost. It's weird. Yeah. It's and, just, and, you know, you seem like a thoughtful person and, and like, a, you know, you're, um, you are aware of, of this feeling and aware of the idea that that is a feeling that could, you know, run out at some point. So because yeah, you were thoughtful wondering. in that way, I think that you are not at risk for losing it. Yeah, I hope you know, it's always I, th- there. I think you'll remind yourself. Yeah, I hope I'm always like, wow, Dave Holmes is on a podcast right now. <laughs> I hope yeah. I'm always have that cool. feeling. You know, I hope I'm always yeah. like that, man. It's exciting. It's like a, and people, people. Well, you're, you're like, questioning it. So you will, you know, like you're, <laughs> you're thinking about it. So you will. Well, a lot of people so, don't. A lot of people just kind of, you know, uh, barrel through and don't, and, and aren't like, don't do the self-examination. It sounds like you're doing it. So I, I think, I, I don't think you're at any risk for becoming jaded. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. And I think, and I yeah. think you've touched on a lot of things that are interesting too, like how much you like, like, like you pretty much like summed up the process of like what it took to get, like what it takes to get an entertainment kind of thing, like working a bunch of jobs, figuring it out, and then like uh, working hard to get there, and then like staying established is impressive too. It's like, I mean, that's gotta be that's gotta be the hardest part. It's probably staying established. I will actually probably get the initial chance, and then staying established being the second hardest probably. And I think you've done well on all that, man. I'm like, it's Thanks, kinda, man. it's kind of it's kind of cool seeing that, and like I like I like people that just like you seem like you know yourself really well. You know, you seem like you're just like. Like you're, you, you're authentic if that means anything, you know, it's like, it's to, thanks to, to, anymore. <laughs> but it's thank, to, you, even, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Like that. You know, I, here's, this is another thing that I, that I learned about myself at MTV that was, that has been helpful and maybe it will be helpful to you. I, um, I never felt like I was like, I didn't have any training in being in, in on TV or whatever. And like, there, there were some aspects of it that, I that I took to naturally but what I loved especially about being on live tv was at the end of a production um I felt like not necessarily that I that I did the job better than anyone in the world could but that I did it in a way that only I would have like you know if someone else had done it it would have been a very different show but like I brought something of myself to it and I'm the only person who could have done what just got done and then in in tv jobs after mtv when i was just kind of reading a teleprompter um i felt like anybody can do this like i'm doing something that anybody can do and and some of everybody's job is doing shit that anybody can do it's not it's not always super artistically satisfying or whatever but like at the heart of it i was like i if you could bring in someone who's so much more handsome who would do the exact same job that I'm doing right now, but be handsome doing it. You know, like I'm just reading a teleprompter and that made me, that was like not satisfying. So I was like, well, what do I, what do I do in a way that only I can do it? And it was writing. And so I started to like focus on that more. And now when I put a piece of work out into the world, I have that same feeling where it's just like, this is, this is purely mine. This came from here. And, and if somebody else had written it, it would have been a very different piece, maybe just as good, but very different. Like I I have, I have to have something um, at the heart of what I do. I have to know that I'm the only person who could have done it the way that I did it. That's that's just my North star. I think that's super, I guess, super great points. I think being yourself, the best is why you're successful. Because you're not like you, like when I'm talking to you, you didn't seem like you're like trying to be somebody. He's like, I ask you a question, you have right. a fast answer. It's, it, it's so, therefore, I, I, I view it as truthful. I mean, I'm mean, the only, I, only you know that, but I don't, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was saying, I, feel, I feel like that just like you seem like you're just yourself the best. That's all it really ever is. You know, Thanks. it's like, uh, it seems like, and like everybody's kind of capable of that. And you, you what I think it was interesting in MTV2 is like everybody had their own kind of thing. You know, the, not, not, it wasn't yeah. like a bunch of clones. It, it was just like a bunch of like right. uh, everybody just being themselves kind of the best. And I liked, uh, I liked the every, yeah one of those guys like in that from the time i watched it they uh, they all kind of like uh like they're all just doing their i don't know it was a good, great collaboration i think and now you came around the uh, the reinvent it was almost like reinvented around the time you came i, I think it was like you had trl just yeah out, i think when you came what we went around the time uh, you, you, you yeah you got hired right it started around the time started right mm-hmm. yeah it was i i think i actually hosted the last mtv live okay um, and then okay. that became yeah that friday before memorial day that i like didn't know I was hosting until I was doing it um, was like the last one. And then total request happened that summer. 
and then when we moved back to New York um, and back into the studio, they merged MTV Live and Total Request, and it became Total Request Live. I thought so. And, okay. I thought, uh, I, thought yeah. I didn't know the exact details but that you were saying, but I, I figured the time frame was around that time. It's like, and it was yeah. crazy. Like you all were just like, it was just crazy. Like how how, how much influence that had in music and stuff. And you had great festivals crazy. from that. I think with MTV advertising and stuff. Like, I mean, that, yeah. Family Values ninety ninety eight would would and ninety nine wouldn't have happened without MTV. Like it just would it just wouldn't have been that big. You know who. Who was on that tour? It was like uh, it was like it was like Corn put it on, I think, but it was like it was like Corn, mm-hmm. Limp Bizkit, Orgy, like like uh, I, I want to say DMX or some rapper oh, like yeah. that. If not, it was pretty dope. And then like or Snoop Dogg or Ice Cube, it was Ice Cube. It was Ice Cube. It took okay. me a second. And then maybe okay. maybe some other guys too. And like um, it was just like a killer lineup as a kid from me, my perspective. At least you you're probably a little older, so you probably just like uh, you, you, I don't know. It was like you you had your yeah. Uh, you thing, wouldn't you know, have caught the, me dead there. That's what but, I mean. Yeah, I yeah. feel like yeah. At, at 27, you wouldn't have caught me that dead there either. To be honest with you, but, right, but in right. eighth grade, in eighth grade, they they they, they got, it got to me. It was just some good stuff. Like sure, it's, kid, it's you know, it's like just skate, yeah. like skateboarding, whatever else kids are doing now. It's for eighth graders, so yeah. it, it did what it was, exactly what it was supposed to do. Exactly, and uh, yeah, and I think yeah. you were saying you had that same experience in the 80s, like uh, like in 84 or whatever, like. Uh, and I think this, this is just magic how I did that. And, I, and, it, and it, part of me just kind of hates that it's not around for like, the, like if I have kids or something like that, I can't just be like, yeah, man, watch, like you're going to find this new band on MTV. You know, it kind of, it kind of uh-huh. kills it, uh, the soul a little bit. Just like thinking about there's nothing really out there like, uh, like that, like that magic yeah. that MTV's had in like the eighties and nineties and up until like the early two thousands, probably, you know, it's like, the yeah. movie, just that magic. But, but there's, maybe, maybe there's something else. The- there's something else. It's just, you know, we're now men of a certain age and we can't see it. You know, yeah, like I, I remember, I remember how uh, terrified my parents were of MTV. Like they really <laughs> held off on getting cable for a couple of years because they knew that I would be glued to it, which I was. Um, <laughs> but I, I can't imagine how how mystifying MTV must have looked to you know Catholic people in their fifties in the nineteen eighties. You know, yeah, that must have been nuts. Yeah, it's gotta be crazy. Like the same way yeah. I look at it today with like uh, like like fourteen and pregnant or whatever the, whatever the fuck's going on. Sure, I'm just yeah. like I don't like, even yeah. care. I'm like this is I'm like, like TikTok. You know, I get on TikTok yeah. and I'm like, what the? What am I looking at? What's happening here? Well, we have to use it to stay to stay relevant in marketing. So I, I I'll I'm like I'm like 35 years old using TikTok trying to figure it out. So yeah, I, so you have yeah. the edge on marketing still and get these views up. You know, so it's uh, yeah, because like, it's like that's all that matters. And, and, and it's just being good and having it like being well in marketing too. So I'm like, I have sure. to pay attention to this stuff. A lot. I have to skim through like a bunch of just people doing nothing really. <laughs> yeah. Like, like what are they doing even? This is like, yeah. Nothing. yeah, I just downloaded it. And I, I don't think, I don't think I've trained the algorithm well enough yet to serve me up what I'm going to like. I'm just getting yeah. crazy people doing comedy and then a bunch of life hacks that I'm never going to use. Oh, yeah, I got I got to get on there and start training it. Yeah, but I mean, you'd be good on TikTok, the man. You, like, you could probably you think. You could probably, yeah, yeah, you've been doing. You've been talking to children through a, through a camera for years now, so I think it, it's true. <laughs> it probably won't be much difference once you once you kind of figure it out. I think you'd kill it then, honestly. Like, well, thanks. We'll see. I don't know. I'm 50 now. It's unseemly for me to be. You're on 50 TikTok. now. Yeah. You look like younger than I do. That's crazy. Like I, oh, yeah. I don't you, think that's eat, true, but thank eat, you. You must eat way better than me, Dave Holmes. Well, I'm <laughs> in Los crap. Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles. I, you know, I don't know. I, it's some healthy habits do work their way in. That's crazy, man. No, 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 one, no one in LA looks 50. I don't think anymore. I think that, that <laughs> I think this, uh, uh, this some of us do. Some so, of us do. Yeah, if you're 70, you look 50. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm just about, well. Uh, before this goes on for fucking five hours and people lose all interest in everything we're saying, uh, do you do you, uh, do you have any links you want people to follow you on or to kind of keep if anyone wants to reach out or anything or uh, any products, well, any kind of things you're writing or working on that you want? To- um, yeah, I mean, just uh, follow me on Twitter and or Instagram. I'm I am at Dave Holmes uh, on both of them, and I'm not shy about plugging what I'm doing. I have uh, I have this uh, this investigative podcast coming in mid October. Um, called Waiting for Impact uh, for the um, the the uh, the company that is uh, that was started by uh, the My Favorite Murder women uh, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark have started their own little podcast studio and I'm uh, I'm doing a show for them um, but more on that later uh, just Twitter and Instagram at Dave Holmes and you'll you'll get your fill. Yo, what's up everyone? Let me tell you about this subscription box from Hamperco. Every month you get a new box shipped to your house. 
$100 value for $39.99. You get your cleaning essentials, your smoking essentials, and a new piece.